Welcome to part one of this video series demonstrating a simple BPSK radio transceiver design for Xilinx RF SOC devices. In this video, we will introduce the BPSK radio architecture by describing the system overview, the radio specification, and the design tools required to create this system. This demonstration uses the RF SOC 2x2 platform. The RFSOC 2x2 contains a ZCU28DR RFSOC device. Two RF ADCs and two RF DACs are available to the user and each are capable of sampling up to 4096 mega samples per second. The platform fully supports the PINK software framework, allowing the user to interact with their FPGA hardware designs using Python and Jupyter. In this video, we will consider how the BPSK radio design can be efficiently mapped to the RFSOC 2x2 board. This will involve exploring particular properties of the RF data converters from Vivado IP Integrator. The BPSK radio architecture described in this video series is deliberately kept simple to reduce design complexity. This radio architecture design is useful for those who would like to learn more about RF SOC and associated design tools. The BPSK radio architecture will be implemented entirely on the RF SOC device. As shown on the screen, the RF SOC device contains FPGA Logic Fabric, a processing system that is host to an application and real-time processor, and finally, RF data converters consisting of RF ADCs for signal acquisition and RF DACs for signal transmission. The intention of this radio architecture is to provide a simple transmitter and receiver on the same RF SOC 2x2 platform. This will allow the radio architecture to be connected in loopback, or it will allow two RFSOC 2x2 development boards to communicate with one another. Let's now examine the portion of the radio design that will target the FPGA programmable logic. The radio system architecture is now shown in the screen. There is the transmitter, the receiver, and the RF data converters, which are host to the RF DAC and RF ADC. The transmitter contains a BPSK modulator, a root raised cosine pulse shaper, and interpolation stage in the FPGA logic fabric. The remainder of the interpolation stages are implemented in the RF DAC block. As shown, the RF DAC block can interpolate the signal by a factor of 8, using a cascade of three half band interpolators. The signal is modulated with a carrier frequency for transmission using a local numerically controlled oscillator, or NCO for short. This entire process is achieved in the digital domain. As soon as the signal reaches the DAC, it is converted to the analog domain for transmission. In our system, we will simply loop back the transmitted signal so that it can be easily received. At the receiver, RF signals are acquired using the RF analog to digital converter. The received RF signal is initially demodulated by mixing down the signal to baseband from a selected carrier frequency. This is achieved using the local numerically controlled oscillator. The signal then undergoes three half band decimation stages to reduce its sample rate by a factor of eight. In the FPG logic fabric, the signal undergoes further decimation and then it is finally sent to the series of synchronization stages. These are course synchronization, time synchronization, phase synchronization, and finally frame synchronization. Each of these stages are essential to extract the transmitted message. We will explore these further in part two of this video. Now shown on the screen is our radio system design with sample rate annotations. The user will be asked to create a message to transmit. Let's restrict the user to only transmitting bytes of data. Let's also limit the rate at which the user can transmit a byte to 12.5 kilosamples per second. As we are using BPSK modulation, we can only modulate one bit at a time. Therefore, the bytes must be serialized into bits before modulation. This results in a BPSK symbol rate of 100 kilosymbols per second and a signal bandwidth of 100 kilohertz at baseband. After several interpolation stages, we would like our system to achieve an overall sample rate of 1024 mega samples per second. Now we will turn our attention towards the receiver. 
Again, to reduce the complexity of the system, the RF ADC will be configured to a sample rate of 1024 mega samples per second. The signal will undergo a series of decimation stages. At the coarse frequency synchronization stage, the sample rate of the signal will be 12.8 mega samples per second. After matched filtering to reduce inter-symbol interference, the signal is further decimated by a factor of 4, achieving an effective sample rate of 3.2 mega samples per second. The time and phase synchronization stages will extract the maximum effect points from the signal. These are the points in the signal that correspond to the actual binary data that was originally transmitted. Finally, the 100 kilosample per second signal is deserialized into bytes at a rate of 12.5 kilosamples per second. Functionally, we would like the transmitter to be able to send a user-defined message, such as Hello World. At the receiver, we would like the message to be demodulated, synchronized, and the payload extracted for analysis. At several points in the receiver, we would also like to observe the signal through signal capture and visualization capabilities. To achieve this functionality, the PINK software framework is deployed on the RFSOX application processing unit in the processing system. We have now laid out the design specification and architecture of our BPSK radio system on RFSOC. Let's now consider the design tools that will support us during the development of our radio system. The first of these is Xilinx System Generator. This is a model-based design tool that exists entirely in the MathWorks Simulink environment. From here, the user can design FPGA hardware architectures and simulate their designs before FPGA targeting. System Generator should be used to design the low-level architecture and hardware functionality of our BPSK radio system design. The next design tool is the Xilinx Vivado Design Suite. This tool consists of a great number of design tools and development resources for Xilinx devices. We will use Vivado to design our BPSK system. In particular, Vivado IP Integrator will be used to connect several intellectual property cores, better known as IP cores, together. IP cores are blocks of logic and data that are used to create hardware architectures for FPGA designs. We will use System Generator to generate IP cores from our hardware architectures, and these IP cores will then be moved to the Vivado Design Suite for system development. Our final design and development tool to produce our BPSK radio architecture is the PINK software framework. PINK is used to interface with our BPSK radio design from the RFSOX application processing unit. PINK is an excellent tool for capturing and visualizing signals in zinc-based devices. This system will use PINK to analyze the BPSK radio architecture at different points in the design. Now that we have covered all the design tools that our system will require, we will finish this video by exploring Vivado IP Integrator and the RF Data Converter IP core. We are now in the Vivado IP Integrator environment, where we are going to take some time to look at the RF Data Converter IP core. So I'm just going to type in RF Data Converter into our search window here and double click the IP core we're interested in, and it's populated itself onto the canvas. I'm just going to double click the IP core to reveal the customize IP window. Now it's currently set up in the advanced mode. What I would like to do is just change it to simple. And that just re removes all of these sort of unnecessary properties and parameters that we don't really want to set. Now on the RFSOC 2x2 board, um, there are two tiles that have ADC blocks connected to SMAs. Uh, the tile 224 and tile 226 each have an ADC block. So what I would like to do is just enable tile 226 and on the DAC side, enable tile 229. Similarly to the ADCs, the RSOC 2x2 is connected to one DAC on tile 228 and one DAC on tile 229. Scrolling down, we can see that we've got two tabs. We've got the ADC tab and the DAC tab. What I would like to do here is just move into the DAC tab initially and we're going to enable DAC0. Now, now that we've enabled DAC0, we can set the sample rate of the DAC. So what we would like to do is set that to 1.024 gigasamples per second, and that corresponds to our BPSK radio system that operates at 1024 megasamples per second. Now, we would like to enable the PLL on our design, the phase lock loop that exists inside the DAC tile. And the purpose of enabling this PLL is so that we can have a more reliable RF clock 
that gets distributed to the rest of the, the, the digital to analog converter blocks. The reference clock requires a very specific uh, clock frequency and we know this to be 409.6 megahertz for this particular sample rate. At the output of the uh, IP core for the RF data converter, we do have a port called clock underscore DAC1. Now this clock can be uh, con connected to our system generator transmitter IP core, and that allows uh, both the systems to stay synchronous with one another. So what I would like to do is just set this clock to 128 megahertz. If we scroll down now, uh, we can actually in start setting the DAC uh, parameters. There are a couple of settings. The first is the data settings for the DAC, and we don't want to modify these too much. The, the first one is asking, we would like to set the analog output data to real or complex. We'd like to keep it real because we're only interested in transmitting real signals. The interpolation mode of this system should be set to eight, however, so because we would like to interpolate by a factor of eight. The next parameter here is a samples per axis for stream clock cycle. We would like to set this to one as we only wish to transfer one sample per clock cycle in our design between the programmable logic and the digital to analog converter. Next up is the mixer setting uh, settings here. And you can see that we can uh, choose between bypassed, coarse, and fine mixing. We're going to choose fine mixing as we would like to select from a, a range of different uh, carrier frequencies uh, that we can modulate our signal onto. Uh, the mixer mode has been set from complex to real, which is ideal, that's what we would like, but you should take note here that the number of samples per axis for stream clock cycle has increased from one to two. However, the axis for stream clock has stayed the same. Now, the purpose of this is because in the RF data converter IP core considers the complex data as being two samples. Uh, whereas it only considered the real data as being one sample. So that's just something to bear in mind in the future. The final settings for the digital to analog converter is the Nyquist zone selection. We would like to just keep this as Nyquist zone, Nyquist zone 1 for now, and we'll set the decoder mode to SNR optimized. These can be changed later from software. We'd like to look at the analog to digital converter. In a similar manner to the RF DAC, we've got to enable one of the ADCs before we can access the PLL and clocking configuration parameters. And we're going to set this up very similarly to the DAC. So we're now going to set the sampling rate to 1.024 giga samples per second. We're going to set the reference clock to 409.6. Is that suitable for this particular sample rate? And we're also going to set the clocking out to 64 megahertz. Noting here that we don't have the option to select the 128 megahertz clock required by the Axis Stream interface. This can be uh, doubled later, the, the clock speed can be doubled later uh, by using a clocking wizard instead. As we're receiving a real signal, we'd like to uh, demodulate it into complex data. And then we'd also like to set the decimation factor to a factor of eight. The number of samples per Axis for Stream clock cycle should just be set to one. And we can then set the mixer type to fine Noting that the, the writing here has went red as the current mixer settings being bypassed is incompatible with uh, a digital output of uh, complex data. So we'll just set this to fine. And you can see that by changing the mixer mode from real to uh, complex, that fixes these problems. And then finally, we can see the analog settings and the Nyquist zone has been set to one and the calibration mode has been set to two. Again, we'll keep them just the same way they are right now, their default behavior, and we can also change it later from software. Now, if we just press OK on our window, and we wait for the IP core to uh, generate, we can then run block automation using the green bar at the top of the screen, and just click OK. And what you'll find is that we've connected up the IP core in our system. So we've now uh, finished up this little demonstration of using the data converter IP core and Vivado IP integrator. In the next video, we'll use System Generator to design, simulate, and generate our IP cores for our BPSK radio system design. These IP cores will then be taken into Vivado IP integrator so that we can design our RFSOC system. Hello, and welcome to part two of this video series on an RFSOC BPSK radio transceiver. This time, we will be designing the radio system architecture and exploring system generator and the Vivado design suites further. Initially,
the BPSK transmitter and receiver will be explored using System Generator. Then, we will turn our attention towards the Vivado IP integrator to explore the radio system and generated IP cores. Finally, a bitch stream will be generated for the purpose of targeting our development board. Before we begin, it is important to highlight the development workflow for this radio system for our FSOC. As you've seen in the previous video, the workflow began at the specification stage. From there, a suitable plan was made where it was decided that System Generator would be used to construct the radio transmitter and receiver. Simulation and testing can be carried out in the System Generator environment, which is obviously extremely useful. After appropriate IP cores have been generated, they are moved into the Vivado IP integrator environment, where they are being used to construct the overall radio system design. After bitstream generation, the PIN framework can be used to design embedded control and analysis software for our system. Hi everyone, so we're going to kick off this video in the GitHub repository for the BPSK transceiver design. So this is uh, where you'll find all of the source code and files for the radio design on our FSOC. Uh, so you'll find us at github.com forward slash straf dash sdr forward slash rfsoc underscore radio. So as you can see on the screen, we're on the landing page for the repository. You can see all the source code and files here, the folders, and also scrolling down slightly, you can see the readme where you will get a general introduction to the project, a little uh, demonstration of it working, and a little bit further down, you'll also have a quick start guide on how to use this, uh, these project files. Further down again, you can see that we've got some dedicated instructions for Vivado and System Generator. Uh, and we can also see that we require uh, some particular software, which is Vivado Design Suite 2020.1 and System Generator for DSP uh, also has to be installed in that installation of Vivado. And then we also require MATLAB R2020A to use these files. So uh, I would quite like to clone this repository to my computer. So to do this, I'm just going to copy the URL for uh, this repository and then I'm going to navigate to my file explorer where in the C drive I've created a folder named workspace and I'm just going to open a git bash terminal here. There we go. So to clone this I just need to enter the command git clone and then paste the URL into, into the terminal. And we'll just let that clone now. It just takes a little moment depending on your internet connection Excellent. So now that our repository is downloaded, I would just like to load System Generator from the Start menu. And again, I've already configured my System Generator setup to operate with MATLAB R2020A. Now, we can see that the current folder is opened into, uh, well, I think it's a, a temporary folder in the system. What we will do is just change it to where we downloaded our RFSOC radio repository. And for me, that was in the C drive, a workspace folder and then RSOC radio. So I'm just going to select that folder and we can see that we are now accessed it on the left hand side here where it says current folder. And I'll just show you where the system generator files are kept. Now if we drill down into the boards folder, the IP folder, and then into sysgen, we can see there's three folders named BPSQ receiver, BPSK transmitter and the data inspector. So the data inspector will come back to a little bit later, but we'll just place our efforts in looking at the transmitter for now. So now you can see we've got two uh, files here. The first one I'm just going to open up is the Simulink model for the BPSK transmitter. There we go. When your Simulink model opens, you will be met with a time scope. Just get to close this for now. Now, as you'll see, we have the BPSK transmitter Simulink model in front of us. In the center of the screen, we do have the design under test, and this is what's going to hold our transmitter pipeline. If we drill down in here, we can see that there are three subsystems. The left is going to implement an Axis Stream Slave interface. The right hand side is going to implement an Axis Stream Master interface. These two interfaces are really important so we can communicate with the DMA on the slave side and we can communicate on the RF DAC with the master side. In the center, we have the algorithm or transmitter pipeline. You can see the transmitter pipeline is very similar to what we described in our system overview. On the first A block here, we have the BPSK's LFSR. This is our random data generation. Then we have our BPSK differential encoder, which is going to essentially create our modulated signal. And then we have our root raised cosine and then their interpolation stage. Each of these stages have been designed using Xilinx system generator blocks. And if we were to just drill into the BPSK differential encoder by double clicking the subsystem, you can see that these uh, system generator blocks have been used to design uh, our BPSK modulator. 
And so this uh, particular architecture has been separated into three sections. It begins with the differential encoder, which differentially encodes a Boolean signal. And then we move on to a BPSK uh, modulation stage, which maps our binary data to BPSK symbols. And then finally, uh, there's a third stage, which is just for the user uh, to shut down the transmission process uh, by simply injecting a zero onto the transmitter pipeline. If we go back up one hierarchy, we can also see that other blocks have been used, for instance, the FIR compiler to design a root raise cosine filter. The FIR compiler can be easily parameterized by simply double clicking the block, revealing the configuration properties window. And from here, we can set things like the filter coefficients. We can also set the data type used by the coefficients in the FIR. And uh, we can do other things like setting the interface used uh, by the block. Coefficients can be added to the FIR by combining the FIR compiler with a tool known as the Filter Designer. Now, Xilinx have provided a block that allows you to access the Filter Designer tool in MATLAB. And as you can see, uh, by clicking on the block, we have revealed the, the graphical user interface to design filters. This particular uh, filter has been loaded with a root raise cosine, but you can design several other different types of filters, such as high pass filters, low pass filters, even inverse sync filters, uh, whatever your application requires, you can use this tool to design it. Now, we'll just return to the top level of our model uh, so that we can begin simulating the design. Now, uh, when we simulate our design, we'll be able to see and visualize the time domain response and the frequency domain response of our BPSK transmitter. So we're just going to do that now by running the simulation. Now, you'll be able to see the uh, time scope is opened up and we can see that BPSK symbols are being produced at a symbol rate of 100 kilosymbols per second. The sample rate of the signal, however, is 128 mega samples per second right now. Now, looking at the spectrum, we can see that there is a significant peak of our baseband, uh, zero hertz in our spectrum analyzer. The output frequency response here is expected. And when we implement the BPSK transmitter in the RF SOC system, we can use the fine mixers of the RF DAC to modulate the signal onto a carrier wave for transmission. Without going into too much detail of the actual physical design of the BPSK transmitter, we have explored some of the basic concepts of system generator design and development. Now though, uh, we would like to create an IP core so we can transfer the BPSK transmitter architecture into Vivado IP integrator for system design and development. And to do this, uh, we simply use our system generator token uh, that we can add via the library. And this will allow us to generate an IP core. As we can see, the system generator windows now opens and we can simply generate an IP core by clicking the generate button. And this will begin now compiling the model and generating an appropriate IP core for the Vado IP integrator. We have now returned to MATLAB and from here, we can open up the BPSK receiver model by going up one directory and opening up the BPSK receiver folder. Now, the BPSK receiver has been designed using several different models. Now, several models were used so that each individual section of the receiver could be simulated uh, before targeting the actual platform. Uh, for now though, we're just going to open up the main receiver model where all of the different parts of the receiver have been collected into one. And I would encourage you to go look through the individual models yourself at a later time. But for now, we'll just open up the model titled BPSK underscore receiver. Okay, now that's opened, we can just close the time scope that's appeared and we can just maximize the model. You can see this model is fairly large and there's quite a lot going on. If we do zoom in, however, we can see each of the separate parts that we described in the system overview diagram previously. So coming from some BPSK system or some receiver, we have our input axis stream interface and then we go in straight into a half band decimator. Then we finally go into our CIC decimator and then through to a coarse frequency synchronization stage the RRC, root raise cosine receive filter, the time synchronization step, and the phase synchronization step, sometimes known as carrier synchronization, and then finally into frame synchronization to extract the payload. 
Now, uh, that payload, that data then gets placed into an Access Stream master interface, and then that interfaces to an output DMA in our, in our platform. Now, just as before, the transmitter design was generated as an IP core, we can do the exact same thing here for the BPSK receiver by just going into our system generator token. And now that the window has appeared, we can see that we can just hit generate and this will begin generating the BPSK receiver IP core. Now we'll move on to Vivado, where we can begin designing our RF SOC 2x2 platform for our BPSK radio transceiver. So we're now going to be building the Vivado IP integrator block design, and we won't be doing this from scratch today. However, we will be using a predefined uh, tickle script that will build the block design for us. So to begin, let's load Vivado 2020.1 from the start menu. Now that Vivado is loaded, I am going to uh, use the tickle console at the bottom of the screen to change the current directory to the RFSOC radio repository. In particular, we will be pointing towards a make script that will help us build the RFSOC radio project. Now we can simply run the command make project that will create a Vivado project to host the RFSOC radio design. To generate the block design, we can run the command make block design. This command uses a pre-built tickle script to create the RFSOC radio IP integrator design. Finally, we can open the project from the Tickle console using the open project command. Now that the RFSOC radio project is opened, we can simply open the block design from the left-hand side uh, pane, the flow navigator pane in the left-hand window. Clicking open block design reveals the IP integrator diagram for the BPSK radio. And from here, I would like to just discuss uh, several blocks in this model, starting with uh, the BPSK transmitter. Now, just zooming in in this area, we can see the BPSK transmitter IP core, and we can also see the RF data converter block that we configured previously. All of the functionality that we added in the system generator environment is now being included in this blue IP core. The BPSK transmitter is connected to the RF data converter, in particular, it, it is connected to the RF DAC. Now, this will allow the BPSK waveforms that we generate inside our transmitter IP core to be transmitted and uh, also modulated onto a carrier frequency. Now, the RF data converter is also connected to the BPSK receiver. And we can follow these orange lines around to our BPSK receiver IP core uh, here. As you can see, the BPSK receiver is again a system generator IP core that we generated previously, and this can be used to uh, synchronize to our BPSK waveform. We can then use it to extract the payloads and send the extracted data onto a master Axis Stream interface. This Axis Stream interface is connected to the direct memory access module that will allow us to move the data from the programmable logic into external memory, where the user will then be able to access the memory from the processing system and analyze the received data. The BPSK receiver is also connected to a data inspector hierarchy, which I alluded to earlier. Ultimately, this allows us to capture, analyze, and inspect various stages of our receiver design to ensure that everything is working correctly. Now, this has been a, a sort of brief overview of our IP integrator block design, and we will now just simply generate the bitstream. And we can do this just in the flow navigator window by simply selecting generate bitstream. Now, this process won't take long, uh, about maybe 30 minutes to generate the entire model on a reasonable computer. So this sums up part two of our video series for BPSK radio transceiver design on RF SOC. In the next video, we'll look at the Pink software framework for radio system control, analysis and visualization of our transmitter and receiver. Welcome back to this video series on an RFSOC BPSK radio design. This time we're going to demonstrate the BPSK design using the Pink software framework. Let's get started. Hi everyone, today we're starting this video in the Jupyter Lab environment. 
Just to give you an idea of my setup here, I have my RSOC 2x2 development board configured with a fresh install of Pink version 2.6 on the, uh, the SD card. Pop the SD card in, switch the 2x2 development board on, and now we're in a Jupyter Lab session that I can access through my Google Chrome browser on my PC. So today we're going to run the RSOC radio demonstration. And just to recap, uh, from the previous video, we did go through the series of design steps to develop our RFSOC radio architecture. In the end, we ended up generating a bitstream that will soon get transferred into the, the Pink framework. But to make things easier, we're simply going to install a pre-generated bitstream and source code files for the RFSOC radio project from the GitHub repository. So if we just navigate now to the RFSOC radio uh, GitHub repo and just scrolling down, you can see in the readme that there is a quick start guide that we can use to set up the RFSOC radio installation. Uh, now, it's basically asking us to open up a terminal in Jupyter Lab and run the command that I've highlighted in blue here. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to navigate back to Jupyter Lab. I've got a launcher window open where I can press the terminal button and this will open up a terminal. From the terminal, I'm going to paste the command into the terminal and hit enter. This will now install the RFSOC radio project, the source code, and a pre-generated bitstream. Okay, so if you have successfully installed the RFSOC radio project, you will see in the terminal window that it says successfully installed RFSOC radio and whatever version number the, the project currently is at. Now, you'll also see in the left-hand pane that a folder has appeared called BPSK-Demonstrator. This is where the notebooks are held that will help you run the demonstration for the BPSK radio design on RFSOC. Now, just clicking RFSOC underscore BPSK underscore demonstrator and double clicking that, you'll open it up and we can see that a fresh notebook has appeared uh, for the BPSK radio demonstration. Now, rather than going through quite a lot of the introductory steps in this notebook, I am just going to scroll down to the hardware setup. So, to run this demonstration, uh, we are looking to have a look back between DAC1 and ADC1 on your 2x2 development board. This will allow us to send a BPSK signal out from the DAC and then receive it back in the ADC. And after having set up an SMA cable and look back between ADC1 and DAC1, we're going to now run the software setup. The first cell is going to import the BPSK overlay class. Now, the BPSK overlay class is where our bitstream will be downloaded and where a series of clocks will be configured and anything else appropriate in our demonstration will be initialized. So we're going to run the next cell, which is OL equals BPSK overlay. Now, that's us uh, programmed our overlay and initialized uh, all of the software required to run this demonstration. We now have the RSOC BPSK radio overview further down. You are already very familiar with this diagram, so we're just going to move past it and down to controlling the system. And uh, Pink is obviously a very useful tool with interacting with our underlying FPGA hardware. And from here, we can actually create a dashboard uh, made entirely using the IPy widgets library. Um, this radio dashboard is going to allow you to change the mixer frequencies of the RF DAC and RF ADC, and you can also use it to switch on and off parts of the radio system. So I'm just going to run this cell, and you'll see that the dashboard has appeared. It's called System Control. You can see that we can modify the DAC and ADC frequencies, which are both currently set to 64 megahertz. We can turn on the transmitter, we can turn it off. Uh, we can also manipulate or enable and disable parts of the receiver synchronization system. So for instance, I could turn off course sync, I could turn off time sync, and even the phase sync. But we'll switch them on for now as they're obviously required for the rest of the demonstration. I'm just going to right click the system control box, and then I'm going to say create new view for output. Then places the DAC control and ADC control and basically the radio dashboard at the bottom of my screen. So that means I can continue on with the rest of the notebook while the dashboard uh, sits at the bottom of my screen. So next up, we have frame generation. This is a very important part of our radio design because uh, the frame allows us to transmit data and synchronize to parts of the payload. We do send a known sequence of bits, and this is the extended Barker sequence. Barker sequences have very high autocorrelation properties, especially when two Barker sequences are directly aligned on top of each other. If they are shifted slightly, then the correlation drops significantly. So that's why we're going to use a Barker sequence, as we can, we can detect this a lot easier. 
Now, uh, we have several sections to our frame. Uh, there's three sections. It's the preamble, the header, and the payloads. In the preamble, we have some random bytes of data, and that will just allow our synchronizer and the receiver to be exercised. We then have the extended Barker sequence, which will be detected by the frame synchronization stage in our receiver hardware. Next up is the header, which contains a frame number, the start of frame, the end of frame, and then the packet length. And the packet length is split into three bytes, uh, indicating the first byte indicates the header, the, then the next byte indicates the payload, and the final byte indicates the padding. We then have the payload, which is a, a series of bytes containing the data that the user wishes to transmit. And th that can be pretty much anything. It could be hello world. Um, and if we transmit less than 44 bytes, we're going to zero pad it up to 44 bytes. So as you can see, the date frame altogether, by adding all the bytes together, it is exactly 64 bytes long. Now scrolling down to the receiver, uh, again, we'll be very familiar with this step. So I'm just going to move past it and uh, begin the next stage of inspecting the receiver. So this cell here is going to allow us to interact with our data inspector in the hardware design. The data inspector is connected to several observation points in our system. So by running this cell, we have created a series of time, frequency and constellation plots that we can uh, use to observe various areas on our receiver design. Let's say we want to use the observation point drop-down menu uh, to inspect the output of the CIC decimator, we can select this and then we can start running the, the time domain plot. And you can see that it's quite easy to see the real and imaginary signal uh, in our time domain uh, plot on shown on the screen. We can also look at the spectrum and you can see that the spectrum has been placed over uh, zero hertz, which is baseband. That's because we've mixed the signal down into, uh, into baseband from the RF ADC uh, fine mixer. There's also the constellation plot. This is fairly useless uh, for the CIC decimation observation point because we haven't time synchronized yet. If we want to be time synchronized, we'll be able to see the BPSK symbols form correctly on the constellation plot. So let's look at another observation point. Let's say we want to look at time synchronization. So what occurs after time synchronization? We've got BPSK symbols forming on the constellation plot and are clustered around two areas. The time synchronizer only synchronizes to the maximum effect point, but we can see that our constellation plot is slightly out of phase. That's why we have our phase synchronization stage. So moving to phase synchronization, we can see that the constellation plot is now rotated correctly such that the BPSK symbols lie only on the real axis. So now if we look at the time domain for the phase synchronization, you can see that all of the data has been picked out correctly. So we're now going to be running the radio system and have the user transmit and receive messages that they create. And we're going to do this using the IPy widgets library. So we've created a little ASCII terminal that will allow the user to visualize received data. And we can uh, initialize this by running the following code cell. So we can see the received messages and it's blank right now because we haven't transmitted anything just yet. Scrolling down, we can see there's an introduction to the receive terminal. We have several buttons on the right hand side. The top one is the play button. The next one is the stop button. And each of these will uh, allow you to listen for transmitted BPSK waveforms with the extended Barker sequence and then print them on the terminal. The stop button stops listening for transmitted BPSK waveforms with the extended Barker sequence. The third one down, the clear button, just clears the terminal. And then there's the auto clear button which will automatically clear the terminal after 10 messages. This is currently enabled. There's a debug button, and when enabled, this will allow you to plot the frame's metadata and payload information. And when it's disabled, we'll only show the payloads. Now, I'm going to right-click this terminal, and just as before, create a new view for output. I'm just going to pop the view over to the right-hand side. So now we're going to go on to Hello World in three ways. So essentially, we're going to try and transmit Hello World in different ways using this architecture. And I'll just show you how that's going to happen now. So the first one is that we're going to use the transmitter from a command line or from the Jupyter Notebook. So when I run this cell, keep an eye on the received messages uh, ASCII dialog box in the bottom right hand side of the corner of the screen. And uh, the reason for that is that once I transmit this, it should appear in the received messages. So I'm going to run it now. And we can see that it has indeed appeared in the received messages window. And we can see that once we've transmitted our first hollow message, we can do another transmission, but this time we're going to ensure that the debug button 
on the receiver terminal is enabled. So I'm going to do that now. So once the debug button is enabled, it turns blue and we're being asked to run the code cell again. So this time we're going to transmit quite a lot of data uh, and this will in turn create several frames for us to transmit. Now I'm going to clear the receive messages pane and just run the code cell here. So in the receive messages pane, we can see that this uh, transmission had been separated into three frames. The first one, which is at the top of the receive messages pane, and I've highlighted it in blue now, is frame number zero. And it's been given uh, several uh, parameters here. So you can see that flags has been set to two, and uh, you can see the length in total is 49 bytes, uh, which is minus the preamble at the beginning and the extended Barker sequence. Now, flags has been set to two because that's the start of frame and this sequence of frames that are being transmitted. And we can see that the payload is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now, we can scroll down and see the next frame in sequence, which has been given the number one. And the flags are zero because we're not at the start of frame and we're not at the end of frame. So there's no reason to use a flag here. And then finally, we can see the payload, which is how Razorback jumping frogs can level six. And then it's just the letter P. Now, the final frame in this sequence, uh, frame number two, has been allocated flags one, which indicates it's the end of frame in this sequence. Now, the length of this frame is 49 bytes, but as you can see, the padding, the zero padding being allocated is 28 bytes. And the payload is eat gymnasts. So that means that we've managed to receive this data fairly well and uh, separate it into three frames. We can now move on and uh, try something a little bit different. This time we're going to create a very similar uh, terminal just to our receive terminal, but we're going to change it to a transmitter terminal instead. And you can see this has now appeared on the notebook by running the code cell here. So I'm just going to create my own custom message. And again, just going to say, let's say pink is amazing and a little exclamation mark. Now, just before I send this, I'm just going to clear my receive messages. I'm going to switch off debug and I'm just going to send this message. And you can see that using IPy widgets, we've created a, a terminal to transmit and a terminal to receive, and that's worked fairly effectively. So now I would like to show you a repeating message, which essentially uses the threading library and the time library to execute a function at a specified rate and number of iterations. This will essentially allow you to create a new thread and transmit a message uh, using a background process. So we're just going to execute this cell that will initialize the timer thread class. So now that we've created our timer thread class, we can simply create a function that can be used as the repeating message callback. And this is the transmitter callback uh, function you can see in this code cell here. Now this function uses a global counter and it creates a hello world message and appends the value of the global counter to the end of the hello world message. Once the data has been transmitted, the global counter will be incremented by one and then a new transmission will be created. So we should be able to see by just running this, we have created the transmitter callback and we've also created the timer thread class with the callback being the transmitter callback. The rate of transmission is half a second and the iterations is 20. And we can just start our transmission. So I'm going to run this code cell at the end of our notebook now. And we can see in the receive messages, we're transmitting every half a second. And that auto clears kicked in. So now we've just removed the last 10 some, uh, transmissions and we're keeping the last 10 there. So we can see that it's, uh, it's worked fairly effectively. Now that's the end of this demonstration. And I, I hope you enjoyed the BPSK radio uh, system that we've designed. I would encourage you to go visit the Strath SDR GitHub page where you can find a lot more uh, projects for RF, SOC and PINK. Also, if you have any questions about this project or, or other projects, you can just go to GitHub and use the issue trackers to drop a message. So I hope you enjoyed this project and thank you very much for watching this video series.